business entities. Hi, my name is Carl Hebler, CPA, and I wanted to explain a, a couple of options for people who are starting a business and want to figure out what kind of business entity they should claim. There's a couple options and some of them are easily uh, would fit your situation. Some of them you have a choice, but there's um, the taxation of each one is something to be aware of. The easiest one, and most people would just start, if you have a business, you just start working for yourself. That would be called a self-employed business. And that would be reported on Schedule C, which we'll go over in a different segment. Schedule C basically picks up all your income. You subtract your expenses. The net amount is taxed but it is subject to self-employment tax, which we talked about in a previous um, clip. Um, if you move up to that, another option is become a limited liability company. They've been popular for the last 20 years, LLC. You can become a single member LLC, which is really the same as being self-employed. It just gives you a little more protection. Some people like the optics for their customers. It looks like, oh, you're an LLC but it really gets taxed the same way as a Schedule C if you are the only owner, a uh, single member. If you want to become, uh, if you have a partner or invest partners or members that would be more than one, that then it graduates to a partnership. And a partnership uh, can also be an LLC, but it gets filed as a partnership and that's Form 1065, Partnership Tax Return. And these are called pass-throughs. The, the income passes through to uh, the, the members on the pro rata share of their interest, of their membership interest. And this is a very favorable um, selection for many people because it's more flexible. You can have people come in and get out. Uh, it's often used for uh, media projects or rental projects where you have different investors coming and going but you do have to have a good set of uh, accounting records and keep track of each member's basis for each of their investments and what they've taken out. The, once you move off that, you could go into a, a corporation. That's where you go to the Secretary of State and you file a, as a corporation where it gets taxed as a C corporation, uh, Chapter C, C Corp. And if you want to elect to not have it be a C corp where it pays tax, you can have it pass through. That's called an S corporation. And S chapter S of the code, they go into all those in the late 40s. They came up with this option to allow small businesses with less than 100 investors to not have everything paid by the corporation. Then when you take money out, you get taxed again. So they make this allowance where there's no tax for the S corp, but it gets passed through to each stockholder. It could be one stockholder. You could, have a, you could have your own corporation and everything gets passed through to you. They're called pass-through entities, PTE, partnerships and S-corps. And uh, those, are the, those are the basic two um, and business entities. Other ones are by structure, like if you have a trust or some other organization, fiduciary. But the top three or four are C, Schedule C, LLCs, partnerships, and corps, which could be C or S. And we can go into each one of those in a later um, talk, a later episode, but I wanted to give people an overview. So when they ask the questions to your um, accountant or attorney, you know, you're know you going in with a little more understanding. These are easy, there's a lot of information on the internet about what they are and what's involved, but try and study the best one for you and don't go too far over, which you end up paying annual taxes and extra fees when there really isn't that much going on. So sometimes it's better to have the business, keep going, and when it's necessary, create a legal entity. The only other uh, point about if you are self-employed, whether you should become a, a, an LLC or an S-Corp, is sometimes it's not your choice, but the person or the company you're working for, especially I know in the Los Angeles area, uh, many companies don't want to hire individuals anymore because they're being beat up through the, it's called the ABC rule, treating people as employees versus independent contractors. So they'll mandate that you become your own company and they're interacting with a corporation or a, a limited liability company. So 
uh, you know, many people in, the, in this gig economy or whether they're in entertainment or doing something on the peripheral, they will be uh, encouraged or forced to, to become a legal entity so then they can be hired on that level, not as an individual. So you get a 1099 at the end of the year to your LLC and you have to file a separate tax return to your S Corp or LLC. But it, it, there are advantages. You just have to carry the cost of uh, filing and reporting and maintaining it. But the upside is you probably can um, be less visible on your Schedule C if you're making more and more income if you do file through a business entity, a legal entity. So we'll talk more about that later in, uh, the, on the tax returns. Thanks for watching.